Campfire question. I think we need to tune that guitar. Sorry. Where we answer your questions about life, the universe, and RV camping. <laughs> Relentless Homesteading asks, we have a Ford F-250 diesel truck and a small 21-foot trailer. I've told my wife that until she will agree to learn how to drive the truck, I'm not willing to buy a bigger trailer. It's not a big deal that I do all the driving, but what if something happens to me and I can't drive? We're not so young anymore. Am I being unreasonable? She is petite at five feet tall and uses this as her excuse saying that she can't, even though she's not even willing to try. <laughs> so the answer is, of course, the man should always do the driving of the RV rig. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> So, you can direct your hate mail to, to Sean. Look, if you break your leg or something, you're just going to have to man up and drive with a broken leg. No. Next question. <laughs> okay, let's be realistic here for a minute. What? You have a different opinion? I have a completely <laughs> different opinion, and you do too. You're just being funny. All right. But seriously, if you are traveling in an RV on a regular basis... It doesn't matter if you're male or female or if you're short or you're tall, you need to be able to drive that rig, even if it's for a short distance, because you never know when the main driver, which could be a female, we know lots of females that drive on the regular and more power to them, uh, but if you are not the main driver, you need to at least be able to drive that rig to a safe spot. For stopping if something happened to your partner who is the main driver. Towing on the Alaska Highway. It's just common sense. You know, if you are of age, if you're 16 and you can drive a vehicle, then you need to be able to drive your rig, whatever your rig may be. If it's a truck towing a trailer, if it's a motorhome, if it's a you know, truck towing a, a fifth wheel, if you're in a class B or a class C, whatever it is, you need to be able to drive it at least short distances to get you from one safe spot to another in case the main driver had some sort of medical emergency or some sort of illness that would keep them from being able to drive. Okay, I'll never forget the first time that Christy drove our Airstream rig, and it was mm -hmm. the very first summer that we took it out west. And We literally had been on the road like a week. Christy's towing for the first time. Scary, huh? Completely ridiculous story, but what is the last item in your RV that you would want to cut yourself with? The answer is your sewer hose. Mm -hmm. And what had happened is <laughs> on the sewer hose, there was a wire poking through the end of the hose. And when I reached to grab the hose, that wire uh, really pierced my thumb. It's kind of a rusty wire yeah. and so I you, said, you know, you haven't had a tetanus shot in a long time, so you need to get one. There's something about like piercing your thumb with a rusty wire in a sewer hose that makes you it's want to disgusting. get to the hospital <laughs> immediately. <laughs> Is there anything worse to cut yourself with? Truck driving woman. So that's why I went and got the tetanus shot and they told me at the time you really probably shouldn't drive this afternoon for whatever right. reason. And so Christy drove across Nebraska. Yeah. Did I marry a great woman or what? I had driven the truck before, but I had not driven the truck towing the Airstream before. So I was sort of thrown into the deep end of the pool. And thank goodness we were in the middle of Nebraska. So it wasn't a very populated area. Uh, I had plenty of room to maneuver Just without wide open space. Wide open space. So it was actually a great place to, to learn. But, you know, what if we had been in a major city when this happened and I would have had to do the driving through traffic and merging lanes and, you know, all that sort of stuff? Still back there. 
it would have been a lot more scary and a lot more dangerous if that had been the case. So we're very fortunate that that wasn't the case. And it was a lesson to us that, okay, I need to do more driving because it shouldn't be that he does all the driving and I never drive. Well, we survived. Your first towing experience. How'd it go? first towing experience. It went very well. How did you do? I did great. <laughs> Are you sure? Yep, you saved me. You didn't have any panic moments? No panic moments. You did wonderful. So now, you know, we switch up a decent amount, I would say. He still does the majority of the driving, but I do relieve him, you know, a lot of times when he's just tired or has a headache or isn't feeling great or whatever. If I have you a know, brain tumor or something like that, tumor, you know. You know, whatever. Right. Stubs his toe, you know. Really, one of the nice things when you have uh, two people who are comfortable driving your rig is one person can take a break. You yeah. know, sometimes even if you're just taking a break for an hour or so, it makes a big difference in how fresh you feel when you're towing your rig. And, of course, that goes straight to safety mm -hmm. because a lot of accidents happen when you're tired. Right. And, you know, what if you're boondocking out in the middle of nowhere and the driver uh, gets injured and can't drive the rig, then you're just stuck right. if the other person can't drive the rig. Yeah, Wh whatever could be the situation, you both need to be able to drive. So that's it. Thank you, Relentless Homesteading, for the great question. If you have a question you would like to ask Long Long Honeymoon, be sure and post a comment. We're always scanning those comments for questions and or personal insults. <laughs> so, and there's usually plenty of both. You can so. just keep those insults to yourself. We really are good on that front. But bring all the questions that you want. We'll welcome those. And if you're new to our channel here on YouTube, please subscribe because there will be more campfire questions in the near future. Yes. Be sure to like this video and share it with your friends so they can learn all the exciting tips and tricks and secrets that we share here on Long Long Honeymoon. That's right. You are our marketing department. We're That's counting right. on you to yeah. share these videos. <laughs> Don't drop the ball. Until next time, what do we say here? We say, Lolo. Lo -lo if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Next question. Zofo Blues asks, Lube, can you use spit or saliva every now and then to lubricate your wheel bearings? The answer is yes, you can, but only if you're willing to lick each individual bearing one at a time. Come on, give me no reaction. <laughs> Tough crowd over I'm here. Sorry, it sort of grossed me out. <laughs> Tough crowd. <laughs>